Gonzalez Manufacturing borrowed $21,000. Part of the money was borrowed at 14%, part at 16%, and part at 18%. Now let's stop right there and sort of start categorizing. This is a financial problem. All right, we're talking about money is borrowed and it's borrowed in three sets. So we're gonna be working with three things. So you wanna start categorizing. The annual interest was $3,380. And the total amount borrowed at 14% and 16%, that total percent was twice the amount borrowed at 18%. Use Gaussian elimination or Gauss-Jordan elimination, which we're not using in this class, to find the amount borrowed at each rate. Okay, now that I've read through it, I'm going to go back. Gonzalez Manufacturing borrowed $21,000. Okay, part of the money was borrowed at 14% and they're talking about interest, the money you have to pay to borrow money. Part of the money was borrowed at 14% interest, part was borrowed at 16% interest, and part was borrowed at 18% interest. Okay, now we start taking notes. So we're going to let. I'm going to use X, Y, and Z, but you don't have to. You could use A, B, and C or any letters you want. Um, I'm going to let X be the amount of money borrowed, borrowed. I am a little upset by that crash. It's the first time my computer or my Wi-Fi has ever really done that to me when it's not a storm. Okay, this is borrowed at 14%. And then we'll let Y be the money borrowed at 16%. And we'll let Z be the money borrowed at 18%. So this $21,000 is divided up into three chunks of money. So we know that X, Y, X plus Y plus C is going to be $21,000. We're told that right here. And we're told that this $21,000 is divided up into three chunks. Okay, now we're also told what all of this interest together adds up to, and that's $3,380. So, the, the amount you have to pay on the X dollars you borrowed is 0.14 times X, and the amount of money you have to pay for this chunk of money is 0.16Y, and the amount of money you have to pay, pay back to the bank or wherever, um, that you have to pay for borrowing the Z chunk of money is 0.18 times Z, and altogether that adds up to $3,380. Now we're told one more thing that the amount of money borrowed at 14 and 
is twice the amount borrowed at 18%. Now the total amount borrowed at 14 and 16%, that's X and Y. So we're being told that this total amount of money right here equals twice the amount borrowed at 18%. So that will be two times Z. So now we have our table ready here. The first thing we're going to do is use a trick, a trick to get rid of decimal places. There's a trick to getting rid of fractions. There's a trick to getting rid of decimals. Here's the trick to getting rid of decimals. I'm going to multiply this entire line, both sides of the line. In fact, it would be more clear for you to see me do it this way. These decimals have two decimal places. I want to move the decimal places over two places so that 0.14 becomes 14, 0.16 becomes 16, 0.18 becomes 18. So I need to multiply by a one and two zeros. In other words, 100. The two zeros are what move the decimal place over two places. But whatever I do to one side of an equation, I have to also do to the other side of the equation. Meanwhile, I need to write this in decimal form. So I'm going to change the position of X plus Y, put the X under the X's and the Y's under the Y's. It's better that way, okay? So I'll put my X here, I'll put my X here plus Y equals 2z. And then, um, because we have numbers over here on the right and not letters, I'm going to subtract 2z from both sides of this equation. Now here's what that's going to do for me. My matrix will be X plus Y plus Z equals 2100, a uh, thousand, sorry. And now, now that I'm multiplying both sides of the second equation by 100, that will give me 14X plus 16Y plus 18z equals 338000. So let's see, that'll be 338000, which will be 338,000. So 338,000. Meanwhile, we'll have in the third third equation, we'll have X ugly X plus Y. Plus, uh, -uh not plus, but minus two Z. Equals two Z minus two Z, which is zero. So now I have a matrix, just like the other day. One, 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 one. So now if I want to write it this way, I'm going to do it, but look at this, look at this. Two 
goes into each of these numbers. We can make the numbers smaller, which will make our work a lot easier if we divide 14 by 2 and 16 by 2 and 18 by 2 and 338,000 338, by, by 2. So that's what I'm going to do. Now I know that 14 divided by 2, let's make a little divided by 2. Divided by 2. Divided by 2. Divided by 2. And divided by 2. And that's going to give us 7x plus 8y plus 9z equals 338, hello, clear, 338, zero, 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 divided by two equals 169,000. So I'm going to write down our um, uh, matrix now as one, 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 21,000, 7, 8, 9, 1, 6, 9, 000, and 1, 1, negative 2, 0. Okay, since I don't have the little boxes already made. This is the way we're going to do it. This is row one. This is row two. This is row three. And now we're going to put a zero in this position. And my recipe is going to be. Negative seven times R1 plus R2. So I'll come over here just so I can do this vertically. I'll have room to do it. Negative seven R1 plus, I could put a plus there, R2. That will give me negative seven, negative seven, negative seven. And negative seven times 21,000 times. Negative seven. Enter. Is negative 147,000. Row two is seven. Eight, nine, one, sixty nine thousand. Now, my new row two, I forgot to write that down because I'm so used to working with the little pre made sheet. Um, this is going to give us the new row two. So new row two, near, near row two, is going to be negative seven plus seven is zero, negative seven plus eight is one, negative seven plus nine is two, and zero, 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 nine minus seven is two, and six minus four is two. So that's going to be my new row two. I'm going to come down here and, oh yeah, matrix one. Matrix two. And I can see I am going to need more paper. 
Not a problem. Matrix two, let me set this up. Row one, row two, row three. And before I do anything else, I want to put row two, the new row two in here. Zero, one, two, 22,000. Okay, now I'm going to give myself another couple of pages. Think I'll need that many? Nah, I think I'll just need one. Insert one page and I want grid paper, notebook paper, because it's easier to write on. Okay, now we should have that down here, yes, so we can continue our work. Now, row one is going to be one, one, or is one, 21,000. And row three is one, one, negative two, zero. Now our next job. I suppose I should make that a different color, shouldn't I? How about yellow? I used that yesterday, so yellow here. And now we're going to put a zero in this position. So I write my recipe to be able to do that. And I'm going to use row one and row three. So, um, oh, look at that. Well, that'll be easy. I'll just multiply row three, why not, by negative one. I could multiply row one by negative one, whatever you want to do. Either way, not both though. Okay, so row one. Oh, and this is going to give me the new row three. Okay, so row one is one, 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 21,000. Negative one times row three is negative one. Negative one, oh my goodness. Negative two. No, positive two, because negative one, negative one, there it is. Negative one times one is negative one. Negative one times one is negative one. Negative one times negative two is positive two. And of course, negative one times zero is zero. So look at this, we're going to get to skip a step. The new row three is going to be, is zero, zero, three, 2100, uh, 21,000. Now here's what I mean by skip a step. Usually all you get is one zero, for this position. And then I would have to make another matrix to get a zero in this position. But I don't have to because we just got two zeros. So that's gonna make our work a little bit faster. I'm sure no one objects. Row one, row two, row three. The new row three is zero, zero, three, 21,000. And row two is the same row two as in matrix two. Uh, so these guys are going to stay the same. We'll have 0, 1, 2, 
22,000 and 1, 1, 1, 21,000. All right, this is our last matrix because we got this Christmas present right here. Now, next step. The next step is to write matrix three as a system with variables in it. So this is going to be one X plus one Y plus one Z equals 21,000. 1, Y plus 2, Z equals 22,000. And 3, Z equals 21,000. And this is our system. So now we're going to start back solving. And we do this because now this is line one, line two, line three. Instead of starting with line one and going to line two and then line three, I go backwards, so it's called back solving. I start with line three. 3z equals 21,000. Divide by three, divide by three. So z equals 7,000, and it's going to be dollars, of course. Now line two, we're going to have 1y plus 2z, which is 7,000, 2 times 7,000 equals 20. 2,000. So 1y, I don't think I need to keep that one, plus 14,000 equals 22,000. Now I have to solve for y. So I'm going to subtract 14,000 from both sides of the equation. Fourteen thousand minus fourteen thousand is zero, so I'm just going to kind of mark through it. That will leave me y plus zero, which is y, equals zero 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 twelve one. Yeah, this is twelve. Twelve minus four is eight. Okay. So y equals $8,000. And now, uh, we go up here to x plus y plus z. Equals $21,000. So, we don't know what X is, but we do know that Y is $8,000 plus Z, which is $7,000 equals 21,000. 8,000 plus 7,000 is 15,000. So X plus 15,000 
equals 21,000. Now I subtract 15,000. from both sides of the equation. So I'll have X equals zero, 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 six thousand dollars. So X equals $6,000, Y equals $8,000, Z equals $7,000, and together, remember we knew that X plus Y equals 2Z, and here we can see it's true, X plus Y, 6,000 plus 8,000 equals 2 times 7,000. So 14,000 equals 14,000. And yes, I would not hesitate now to put those answers into the answer box. And this is a good review of what we did Tuesday. With the row operations and the matrices, this time without the, the, the pre um, copied boxes to help us out. This is the way you would just do it freehand. Discussion. Miss, this, these classes are recorded, right? I'm sorry? These classes yes, are recorded, Yes, right? they're recorded. Where do I find them? Ah, this is week two, so it will be in module two in Canvas. Okay, thank you. <laughs> week two module. Okay. And, and this worksheet will also be uploaded. And I think that helps. More questions, this is good. Okay, you can email me too. And and I will read the, uh, the chat. Now we go to one of my favorite word problems, the Burks. Anybody who's ever been a, um, um, a parent can sympathize with the Burks. The Burks pay their babysitter $5 per hour before 11 p.m. and $7.50 after 11 p.m. One evening they went out for four hours and paid the babysitter $27.50. What time did they come in? Well, cool. We're, we've got to stop and think about this. They were gone for four hours. Um, and that time is split up, we can assume, uh, into hours before 11 p.m. and hours after 11 p.m. So if I let X equal hours before 11 p.m. and Y equal hours after 11 p.m. Could, could everybody mute themselves, please? 
when they're not asking a question. Thank you. So they were gone for four hours. I know that the hours before 11 p.m. and the hours after 11 p.m. will equal four. Now, how much do they have to pay for each of these hours? Well, they pay $5 per hour for hours before 11 p.m. So five times X will be the total amount of money they spend for however long they were out before 11 p.m. And they'll spend 750 times each one of the hours after 11 p.m. And that will be the total amount of money they ended up spending, which is 2750. So now, we're going to solve this little two by three matrix, which means we don't even have to use matrix math. There are two ways to solve this. Um, uh, we can solve by substitution, or we can solve by elimination. Elimination is usually cleaner, and it's what we need if we're going to use matrices. However, I want you to be able to see it. So, since we have to know what X and Y are anyway, I'm going to solve for X. And I do it, th do it this way. X plus Y equals four. If I want to solve for X, I'll subtract Y from both sides of the equation. And so I'll get X equals four minus Y. Now, when I substitute, I have to use the other equation. So it's probably better to label these equations, line one and line two. This is from line one. So I have to take this substitution four minus Y and put it in for X in line two. Five times four minus Y plus 750 Y equals 2750. Substitution is the method you used most of the time, not all the time. But most of the time, when you first learn, learned about solving two by three systems in beginning algebra, which may have been a long time ago for some of you, not so long ago for others of you. OK, so five times four is 20. 5 times minus y is minus 5y plus 750y equals 2750. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to mer I'm merge. I'm going to combine like terms. I've got a minus 5 here and a 750. We've got 750y minus 5y, that will leave me 250y. So minus 5y plus 750y is 250, whoop, whoop. $2.50 times y. And then here's the 20. This is positive now, so we'll have 20 plus 250Y equals 2750. $27.50. Good, okay. Now I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides. 
And let's just put a dot zero zero here just to make sure we know. The 20 is a whole 20. And this is the whole part of the decimal, so that just keeps them lined up correctly. 20 minus 20 is 0, 250, $2.50 times Y equals 50. 27 minus 20 is 7. So we've got 250Y equals 750. I need to make that neater. There. Okay, this is 250 times Y, so I have to divide by 250. And yeah, I have to divide by 250. And so Y is going to equal what I get when I go to my calculator, 7.5. Zero divided by two dot five zero is three. Three hours after eleven. Three hours after eleven p.m. Those wild children having a fun time without their child, their baby, maybe a baby. Okay, so now we have to figure out what X is. The good thing about substitution is that this substitution equation tells you what X equals. X equals four minus Y. So, actually, I don't need to know X at all, though, do I? But let's do it anyway. X equals 4 minus 1 equals 4 minus 3 equals 1. We don't have to know that. Why? Because I just remembered what they're asking, what the writers of the question are asking is, what time did they come home? What did the clock say? Well, OK. They came home three hours after 11, but that's not the answer. The answer is 11 p.m. plus three hours. So. 11 plus 1 is midnight. Midnight plus 1 is 1 a.m. 1 a.m. plus 1 is 2 a.m. So they got home at 2 a.m. I hope the babysitter was sacked out on the couch. But she's going, probably she, is going to be a rich young lady. So she can go shopping the next day. So this is the real tricky part. Whether you use elimination or whether you use um, substitution, you can come up with the answer three. But by the time you get there, you may have forgotten the question, which isn't solve for X and Y, it's what time did they come home? Which means you have to translate the hours after 11 into time on the clock. Presumably not military time. 1400. Although you could get military time first. 
No, you couldn't because it's at night. Oh well, I tried. Anyway, 2 a.m. and I hope they had a wonderful time. The trick to doing all these questions is you want to look at how many parts are we talking about? In this problem, the first one, we were looking at three parts. In this problem, we were looking at two parts. Whoops, this problem. We were looking at two parts, the hours before 11 p.m. and the hours after 11 p.m. So you want to try to be tuned into that. How many parts, how many parts, how many parts? Okay. Now here's Mike, and he's got a job. Oh, Walmart is hiring people for their um, 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 uh, supply chain, okay? They're hiring people for the warehouses, they're hiring people for delivery, they're hiring people for ordering, and they start at $20.73 an hour, and they'll give you a bonus if by a certain date, like October 1st or something, you've already been vaccinated. I just thought I'd share. I think that's great news. I never thought I'd see the day that Walmart would pay their, their regular workers over $20 an hour, but it seems like they're all desperate. Amazon is desperate. Um, any, any, any company that ships goods is desperate because everybody who wants a job is hired now. And they're being forced to pay extravagant wages to get people to do the work they need. Okay, I just thought I'd mention that. Amazon is hiring also. Yeah. Mike works a total of 55 hours per week at two jobs. He makes six dollars per hour at job A and seven dollars per hour at job B. Two parts, OK, we're going to be dealing with two parts. At least it seems that way. I haven't finished reading it. If his total pay for one week is three hundred forty eight dollars before taxes, then how many hours does he work at each job? OK, so. I don't know. Let's figure it out. He's got job A. I'd rather write in black. It's easier to see job A. And job B. And he works 55 hours a week at the two jobs. So if we let X be the hours he works for job A, or you could let A be the hours he works for job A, that would make more sense, quite frankly. And Y be the hours he works, hours, I should make it plural, the hours at job B, then X plus Y are going to equal, is going to equal 55 hours. I'm, this is just taking notes. Now, he makes $6 per hour at job A, so the total amount Mike makes at job A is six times X. And the total amount of money he makes at job B is going to be seven times Y. So if you add this much money to this much money, before taxes, he gets 
$48 per week. So now I have two equations. I have X plus Y equals 55 and 6X plus 7Y equals 348. Now, how many hours does he work at each job means we have to solve for X and solve for Y. So I recommend, since elimination is a little bit easier, I think, at least it's more clear, I am gonna multiply line one, line one by negative six. Okay. So now this is one and this is one. So I'll have negative six X plus, well, plus negative six will be minus six. Minus six Y equals negative six times 55. Negative six times 55 is negative 330. And 6x plus 7y equals 348. And now we add vertically. Negative 6x plus 6x is 0x, which is 0. Plus negative 6y plus 7y is 1y equals negative 330 plus 348 is going to be positive 18. So Y is going to equal 18 hours. So now it's just a matter of going to either of the original equations and substituting 18 for y. So I propose to do it in line one because line one is easier. X plus y, which is 18, equals 55. And I'll subtract 18 from both sides of the equation. X equals 15, so that's a four. 15 minus eight is seven, and four minus one is three. So 37 hours. Now let's add them together. 37 plus 18. Seven plus eight is five. 15, carry the one. 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So yes, that's correct. So X is, uh, we could write it up here. That's where the answer boxes would probably be. X equals, and an answer box, Y equals, no, it wouldn't be. It would be sentences. Hours before, oh no, hours before 11. No, wrong story. Hours at job A are, and hours at job B are. But let's just leave it like this, 37 and 18. What a pity he's only got 18 hours at the higher paying job. He should go to work for Walmart. Okay. Discussion about this. This is a pretty straightforward problem if you're looking for the parts. And you see in what the second equation that there are two parts, job A and job B. So everything will involve them. And then there are always two facts about job A and job B. One, we've got the total number of hours, and two, we've got the total 
number of uh, dollars he makes per week. Okay. Now I like the donut factory. Kyle works at a donut factory where a tit, see I thought you'd be hungry about now. That makes me hungry. Kyle works at a donut factory where a 10 ounce cup of coffee costs 95 cents. Let me underline that. A 10 ounce cup of coffee costs 95 cents. And a 14 ounce of coffee costs $1.15. Up, oh, there are going to be three parts, huh? And a 20 ounce cup of coffee costs $1.50. That's like small, medium, large. During one busy period, Kyle served 24 cups of coffee. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. 24 <laughs> cups of coffee using 374 ounces of coffee while collecting a total of 30.05. How many cups of each side size did Kyle fill? It looks like another XYZ problem to me. Well, here are the answers. Okay, so let let X equal the number of ten ounce cups of coffee and y equal the number of 14 ounce cups of coffee and Z equal the number of 20 ounce cups of coffee. And while I'm at it, I think I'll take some more notes here. The 10 ounce cup of coffee costs 95 cents. The 14 ounce cup of coffee costs $1.15. And the 20 ounce cup of coffee costs $1.15. 50. That just sort of lets me keep track of two things at once. All right, now we're getting information here. Kyle served 24 cups of coffee. So X plus Y plus Z equals 24. Using 374 ounces of coffee. All right, so X is the number of 10 ounce cups of coffee. The number of ounces of all the 10 ounce cup in all the 10 ounce cups of coffee is 10 times X. And then all the ounces of all the ounces of coffee in the 14 ounce cups of coffee are 14Y. And all the ounces of coffee in the 20 ounce cups of coffee are 20Z. And that means he sold 374 ounces 
of coffee. And then we're told that this is the amount of money he collected. Well, the amount of money he collected for the 10 ounce cups is 95 cents per cup times the number of cups. Now for the 14 ounce cups of coffee, $1.15 per cup times the number of cups. Plus $1.50 per cup times the 20, 20 ounce cups. No, 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 no. Got lost. Oh, no, I didn't. Never mind. A uh, dollar fifty times Z. That's how much money the Z cups brought in or cost cost us, it's, it's revenue for them. Um, and so all of that is going to add up to $30 and five cents, zero five. So if we wanna get rid of our decimals, the quick and easy way to do it is to multiply both sides of line three by a hundred. And that might be better, really. 100 times 100. I should do it like this. OK. And to make the numbers up here smaller, 2 will go into all of these numbers. So I can divide by two or not, but when the numbers are smaller, everything is better. So I'm going to come over to the side for that. 10x divided by 2 plus 14y divided by 2 plus 20z divided by 2 equals 374 divided by two. And I can do the first three in my own head. 5x plus 7y plus 10z equals 374 divided by two. It's 187. So this is going to be our line two. Over here, we're going to have 95x plus 115y plus 150z equals 3005. And five will definitely go into all those. So I'm going to divide by five, divide by five, divide by five, and divide by five. And that will give me 95 divided by five. No, not times. Divide there is 19, so 19x, 115 divided by 5 is 23, so plus 23y plus 150. One fifty divided by five is thirty. Could have done that in my head, probably. Equals three thousand five three zero zero five divided by five is six oh one. 
So now let's rewrite this with smaller numbers. It'll be easier and quicker to work on that way. X plus, well, I need more room between them, don't I? Yes, I do. Okay. X plus Y plus Z equals 24. And 5x plus 7y plus 10z equals 187. And 19x plus 23y plus 30z equals 6 Oh, one. And now this is my system. Now class is going to be over. My intention is to make a video uh, with all of these problems being worked, so I'm going to continue. And if you want to stay, feel free. If you want to leave, feel free. OK, either way, have a good day. So yeah, so, yeah these, these videos gonna be exercise, right? You right? said to canvas. Say more it again. More. I'm saying, that, yeah, like these extra videos, we we gonna be able to see in uh, modules, yes. right? Yes. Okay. So so it's okay to leave because I'm doing them anyway. So I am going to make the matrix now. One, 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 twenty four, five, seven, ten, one, eighty seven, nineteen, twenty three, thirty, six, oh, one, six hundred one. This is my matrix one. Row one, row two, and row three. And I write my recipe. I need to put a zero in this position. So if I can add five to negative five, that'll work out. So what I'll do, what I propose to do, is take line R1 and divide all the numbers in it by, multiply all the numbers in it by negative five, and then just add it to R2 the way it is, and that will give me new R2. Two. So I'll come over here and say negative five R1 and R2. And we'll even make a plus sign. OK, now negative five times one is negative five. Uh, yes. Yes. Negative five times one is negative five. Negative five times one is negative five. Negative five times 24 is negative 120. And our two is five, seven, 10, one, 87. I'll add vertically so that new row two will be zero, two, five, um, seven, 
67. Yes. OK. So now I go down and I make matrix two and I do have room. That's wonderful. So matrix two. Row one, row two, row three. The new row two is zero, two, five, sixty seven. Row one and row three stay the same. One, 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 twenty four, and nineteen, twenty three, thirty, six, zero, one. OK, now. My next goal is to put a zero where the 19 is, and I'm afraid there is no choice. I'm going to multiply. I'm going to have to multiply every number in row one by negative 19. So here we go. Here's the recipe. Recipe. Negative 19, that's going to be painful. Negative 19 times row 1 plus row 3 will give me uh, the new row 3. All right, now, so negative 19 times row 1 plus row three will give us the new row three. Negative 19 times one is negative 19. Negative 19 times one is negative 19. Negative 19 times one is negative, oops, 19. And negative 19, times 24 is negative 456. I thought it would be a lot bigger. Row three is 19, 23, 30, 601. So negative 19 plus 19 is zero. Negative 19 plus 23 is four. Negative 19 plus 30 is negative 11. Yeah. I wanna make sure of that. Negative 19 plus 30. Yes, it's positive 11. Don't guess. OK, now 601, well, negative 456. Minus uh, plus 601. Is 145. Now let me put that away. Yeah. And so this is going to be my new row three. Zero, four, eleven, one forty-five. So I come down here, row, row one, row two, row three, and this is going to be zero, four, eleven, one forty-five. Zero, and then one and two are the same as up here in matrix two. Zero, two, five, sixty-seven, and one, 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 twenty-four. 
24. Okay, now next job, a zero in this position, and this time we're gonna have to work for it. I'm gonna use row two and row three so that I keep this zero. So row two plus row three, and to be able to get a zero in this position, I will multiply row two by negative two so that I can get a negative four in that position. And that will give me the new row three. There are two new row threes because there have to be two zeros there. Now, negative two row two plus row three equals new, that's a new, row three. So negative two row two is negative two times zero is zero. Negative two times two is negative four. Negative two times five is negative 10. Negative two times 67 is negative 134. And row three is zero, four, 11, 145. So my new row three is going to be zero. Zero plus zero is zero. Negative four plus four is zero. Negative 10 plus 11 is one. And negative 134 plus 145 is 11. No doubt about that one. Okay. Um, right, okay. Now, I write matrix, oh, this is at matrix two, this is matrix three, because I'm going to write matrix four, which will be my last matrix. Row one, row two, row three. Zero, zero, one, eleven. And then row two and row one from here. Zero, two, five, sixty seven, and one, 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 twenty four. You know you're, you're done doing row operations with Gaussian elimination when you have your lower triangle of zeros right there. Now, the next step is to write this matrix as a system of lines. So 1x plus 1y plus one Z equals 24, and two Y plus five Z equals 67, and one Z equals 11. Line one, line two, line three. All right, we're going to back solve. But we don't have to do a whole lot of back solving on uh, 1z, which is z equals 11. 
we know right away from line three that Z equals 11. So we go to line two. 2y, 2y plus 5 times 11 equals 67. 2y plus 55 equals 67. Subtract 55 subtract 55, well, subtract 55. 55 minus 55 is zero. So I'll have 2y on the left equals seven minus five is two, six minus five is one. And when I divide both sides by two, I get y equals six. Now I go up to line one, which is X plus Y plus Z equals 24. So, we don't know what X is. Y is six, Z is 11 equals 24. So X plus 17, 6 plus 11 is 17, equals 24. Subtract 17 from both sides of the equation. That'll be 7. So X, that's zero, X equals seven. So X equals seven, Y equals six, and Z equals 11. Let's go back and look at the answers. Hold my breath. Seven, six, and 11, yes. This is X, this is Y, and this is Z. I'm always delighted when I get them right. All right, and we move on. How many more of these do we have? Aha, the last one. Okay. The quantity of cholesterol in an egg is 276 milligrams. Well, let's read the whole thing. The quantity of cholesterol in a cupcake, I love cupcakes, is 18 milligrams. And the quantity of cholesterol in a slice of pizza is nine milligrams. Oh, oh, no, I was reading the wrong part. I was reading the answers. Well, cool, I should have already picked up on that. All right, now here we go. By eating one egg, one cupcake, and one slice of pizza, a child consumes 303 milligrams of cholesterol. If the child eats three cupcakes, my style, and four slices of pizza, that kid is me. He or she takes 90 milligrams of cholesterol. Is that all? It's not true of calories though. By eating two eggs and one cupcake, a child consumes 570 milligrams of cholesterol. How much cholesterol is in each item and here we're told the answers why work it no bad attitude okay so here we go here we go 
we're going to let all right egg pizza Oops, I left out the cupcake. How could anybody ever leave out a cupcake? So I'm taking notes now. And pizza. Okay, now this tells me that I'm going to let X equal the amount of cholesterol in an egg, I'm going to guess here. OK, so let. X equal amount. No, let's say milligrams. We're doing milligrams. Milligrams. Of cholesterol. CHO, let's call it that, of cholesterol in egg. One egg. And Y equal milligrams of cholesterol in one cupcake. And Z equal milligrams in, of cholesterol in pizza, a slice of pizza. Now, they should have said like, does it have pepperoni? Does it have sausage? Is it vegetarian? But no, okay. Pizza, in one pizza, one slice of pizza, slice of pizza. And we know if the child eats one egg, one cupcake, and one slice of pizza, the child consumes 303 milligrams of cholesterol. So we'll have X plus Y plus Z equals 303. Okay, if a child eats three cupcakes and four slices of pizza. They only get and four slices of pizza. They only get 90 milligrams. That cannot be true. Still, my mouth is watering. Yeah. Now by eating two eggs. And one cupcake. The child consumes 570. Milligrams of cholesterol. How much cholesterol is in each item? OK. So. I am going to put a zero where we don't have any item being eaten. And this will give me a matrix of one, one, one. Well, I ought to put the ones in and not be lazy. It's better for people. One, 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 three, oh, three. Zero, three, four, ninety, and two, one, five, zero, five, seventy. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, there is a row operation that I seldom use, but I'm going to use it now.
Yes, I am. And that is, I'm going to interchange row here, row one, row two, row three. I'm going to make this an official row operation, which it is. I'm going to, here's my recipe. I don't have to calculate anything. Exchange. Exchange. Row one and row three. Okay, so here I go. So I guess that would make this matrix one. We're going to have an extra matrix this time, perhaps. Matrix one, matrix two. Row, the new row one, new row up, same row two, new row three. Two, one, zero. 570. This is going to come down there. 1, 1, 1, 90. And then row 2 stays the same. 0, 3, 4. Ah, 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 ah. Look at that. Almost made a terrible mistake. 303, there now, 111303 is on the bottom, and the 90 goes here. Okay, now you may be wondering why I did that, and the answer is I do not like having a zero in that position down there because it will ruin, totally ruin, my lower triangular work. So I switched them. And now I'm going to continue on as though nothing happened. As though 210570 were always row one and row three was always 111303. Actually, the proper English is were only. If you're talking about something that's not true as though it were true. I always thought that was so weird. OK, here we are. Now my job, notice we've already got a zero there. So my job now will be to put a zero there. And then put a zero there. So here's my recipe. There's my phone. I'm not going to answer it. Nope. It's probably just a telemarketer anyway. I am going to take row one. And I'm going to add it to. Negative two times row three. And that will give me my first new row three. All right, so row one plus negative two row three will equal new row three. Here we go. Row one now is two, one, zero, 570. Oh dear. All right, and negative two times row three. All right, don't panic yet. Negative two times one, well, that'll give me a negative two, a negative two, a negative two, and a negative. 6, 
06, which I do not like at all. However, we're going to stick with it. Not panic. 2 plus negative 2 is 0. 1 plus negative 2 is negative 1. 0 plus negative 2 is negative 2. Oh, it's not going to end up bad at all. And 570 minus 606. 570 minus 606. is negative 36. That's not bad. Do you know why it's not bad? Because. I can multiply right now. New my new row three. By negative one. And that will give me a new row three of zero, one, two, thirty six. Ta da. All right, that's my new row three. And now I'm going to move down here. Row one, row two, row three. Write my new row three, which is zero, one, two, thirty six. Uh, uh, thirty six. And zero, three, four, ninety, and two. One zero five seventy. So this is matrix three. Yeah. So now my job is to put a zero here. And how am I going to do that except to take row two and add it to negative three times row three? I can see this problem is designed to get my heart pumping. All I need is a negative answer to ruin everything because we're talking about quantities of milligrams. There are no negative milligrams. OK, so I'm nervous, nervous about this. Recipe. But I've also found that most of the time, if I start, if, if I keep going with it, it all works out. In, when I'm working on matrices, that doesn't necessarily mean real life. OK, I'm going to take row two and I'm going to add it to negative three times row three. And that will give me a new. Row three. So here we go. Uh, row two plus Negative three row three will give me new row three. Let's see what happens. Zero, three, four, ninety, and zero. Negative three times one is negative three. Negative three times two is negative six. Negative three times thirty six. Negative three times thirty six is negative one zero eight one zero eight one hundred eight. But the same thing is going to happen again. Zero plus zero is zero. 
3 minus 3 is 0, 4 minus 6 is negative 2, and 90, 9, clear, 90 minus 108, or plus a negative 108, is negative 18. That is not going to be a problem. Because, again, I can take the new row 3. Zero, zero, negative 2. Well, I didn't even need to do that. Wait a minute. Are we smart or what? What? Huh? What? No, I'm going to divide by negative 2. So that will give me negative, divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, and divide by negative 2. So now my other new, I mean, my new new, new new, that would be cute, row 3, I'm not going to do that, but it would be cute, row 3, will be zero divided by negative two is zero. Zero divided by negative two is zero. Negative two divided by negative two is one. And negative 18 divided by negative two is nine. Woo! And so, and so, we are going on to matrix number four. Row one, row two, row three. The new row three is zero, zero, one, nine. And the previous row, uh, no, <clears throat> row two, zero, three, four, ninety. And two, one, zero, 570. Look at that. Row one and row two have stayed the same because I had a zero. Yeah, isn't that nice? That's like a little gift right there. Okay, now. Now I'm going to write out my system. I might as well use this space over here. Nobody said I can't. 2x plus y equals 570. 3y plus 4z equals 90. And Z equals nine. One Z, right? So that's Z. Line one, line two, line three. So now I know what Z equals. I'm going to go backwards, back solve. Back solve. I've got z equals 9, and then 3y plus 4 times 9 equals 90, which means 3y plus 36 equals 90. Subtract 36, subtract 36. 36 minus 36 is 0. So we've got 3y equals 90 minus 36 is 54. Divide by 3, divide by 3. 54 divided by 3 is 18. So y equals 18. 
Now we go to row one, which is 2x plus y. So line one, 2x plus y equals 570. 2x plus 18 equals 570. Subtract 18, subtract 18. I really hope this is right. 2x equals 10. 6, that becomes 56. So 10 minus 8 is 2, 56 minus 1 is 55. And then I divide by 2 and divide by 2. There's no way he could have. I'm still working on the coffee. We are not talking about milligrams of coffee or ounces of coffee. We are talking about milligrams of cholesterol, and I keep forgetting that. 552 five, divided by 2. Enter. One egg has 276 milligrams of cholesterol. I love eggs. Oh, I'm devastated. Okay, let's go up and see. I'll be more devastated if I'm wrong. Cholesterol in an egg is 276. Woo! Cholesterol in a cupcake is 18 milligrams. Cholesterol in a slice of pizza is 9 milligrams. Got it right. Woo! Okay, this is how you do these problems. Let's analyze real fast. We very clearly have three parts to the problem. We're talking about eggs. We're talking about cupcakes. We're talking about pizza. We're talking about my choice, cupcakes and pizza. Oh, 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 oh and it's lunchtime. So I am going to go and I will wish you a very good day having fun working on these problems. Talk to you later. Remember, you're going to have different numbers than I have, but it's the same problem. So go have a good time because math is fun and otherwise, but it's fun to me. Talk to you later. Bye bye.